We'll just get into the word of God. Before I get into the word of God, I greet you one more time. All in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Those who are watching now online, are uh, watching later. May God bless you and speak to you in this word. And especially those who are here. I believe in my spirit and take it as a promise. And I see, I believe that we will see together the miracle working power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I say hidden treasure? And something is hidden for your life right from the day one. People of God, the treasury is something always a wealth package. A treasure is always something which is always hidden. If it's not hidden, it's called not a treasure. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a treasure hunt for the kids, life. We give something and we, re we place it in different places and we know where we kept it and we ask them to search for it so that when they get it, they'll be happy. Amen. God is with us. Same way. Making it sense? When God created you, when you receive the power of God, when you receive the salvation of God, when you become the child of God, I tell you in the name of Jesus, God has set a treasure for you. And it's you to seek it. And it's you to receive it. And you to grab it and say, Lord, I got it. Amen. And if the treasure is not there, we does not conduct the treasure hunt. Am I right, to parents? If you don't keep the treasure in different places for the kids and we don't call them to play the game of treasure hunt. Am I right? Am I making it sense? I tell you, we will show as a parent, you keep something hidden for your children and ask them to find out so that they can enjoy the treasure. How much more is our Heavenly Father kept some treasure which is more beyond your calculation or expectation or beyond what you can think of it or even imagine it. I believe in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is a hidden treasure for you. And the Lord may open this door this morning. That the treasures will be seen. Not by might, not by power. But by the Spirit of God. Can I hear one amen church? <coughs> Glory be to God. This is a promise. For me, for you and the church. Isaiah. Chapter 45, verses 2 and 3. Today I tell you, I just wanted to share this as a promise to you more than a sermon and a message. I wanted to share this as a promise to you that claim the promise. The Lord may do something powerful into your life this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. The Bible says to me, I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down the gates of bronze and cut asunder the bars of iron. And I will give you the hidden treasure, riches stored in secret places. And so that you may know that I am the Lord. When you find the treasure, it is not you found the treasure. You should know that there is a God who can make you all the things possible by giving you the treasure. And the God of Israel who summons you by your name. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, I'm excited as I'm preaching this word. May the Lord speak to me. May the Lord speak to you and give you the desires of your heart in the form of a treasure. And may God open the doors of heaven and show you the treasure where the Lord has kept in for you. You cannot see this treasure with the sight of a man. You cannot see the treasure with the intellect of a man. You cannot see the treasure with whatever knowledge you acquire. But you can see only this through the eyes of faith the, that has God has imparted into your life. Can I hear one amen? amen? Glory be to God. The Lord says, I go before thee. People of God, I wanted to go quickly into the textual context of this message. I want to do Meditate for a while as you are hearing this word that the Lord has speak to you this morning. People of God, this book is not a story. This book is a history. Amen. Hallelujah. What I'm going to share to you it is not a story I'm going to talk to you. I'm talking a, a history that has been taken place on the face of the earth. Can I hear an amen church? Enjoy the word of God. 
This God talk, he doesn't talk the tales of the stories of a, you know, a, a artificial thing. He talks about the things that is going to happen. He talks about the thing that has happened. He talks about the things that are going to happen into your life in Jesus' name. That's why it's called the living world. And what the story I'm going to share you is not a story. It's been happening in the history, in the lives of people, in the lives of uh, 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 Persians, uh, in the life of Israel, in the life of Babylonians, in the life of the Middle East country. This is what the story is all about. Glory be to God. People of God, you got to understand this. This is an Isaiah, a prophet, who is talking about a country called Israel and is foretelling the people of Israel what their future is going to be. And my God is a God always talks about the future. My God never sees your path. My God never sees your mistake. My God never sees what you have gone through. But my God sees your future and that's the reason he gives you a promise. Promise is always hidden in the future. Amen? Promise is always hidden in the future. That's the reason our God is a God of promise and a God of miracles. Amen? Hallelujah. For you to see the promise, you've got to step into the miracle realm. May God help us this morning. People of God, if you see the history of Israel, and Israel, after the King Solomon, the kingdom divides, and ten tribes go as a northern territory which is called Israel and two tribes go which is a Judah and uh, Benjamin they call Judah and Judah is in the southern part of the uh, country and the northern part the ten tribes are the northern part of the country which is called Israel but in uh, because the people of Israel whether they are Israel or Judah they are not faithful to God because they are not faithful to God the land of Israel, in other words, the ten tribes of Israel, gone into the captivity of Assyria in the year 720 BC. Please listen carefully. I'm talking. The reason I'm taking this time to tell you how oh my God works in the history of the people. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited this morning. Not because for any reason. Because God is a God who moves in your history. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a God who moves into your affairs, who moves into your families, who moves into your problems, who moves into your circumstances and he tell you, hey, I'm in control of your situation. I'm in control of your life. I'm in control of your circumstances. I am in control. I am God who sees the present and the future. Amen. Hallelujah. We are talking a God of that caliber. We are talking a God of that kind of uh, attire and uh, magnificent or whatever you call it. We are talking a God that really involved into your day to day life. We are talking a God who really involved into your circumstances and situation and tell you, hey, my son, my daughter, I'm holding the future. Amen. Hallelujah. That is a God I serve. When God called me, that's a God I trusted. That's God I believe. I never believed in any, any of the other circumstances. We just believe God and we stepped in because He know my future is in His hands. Amen. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Amen. Everything is in Him, created in Him and for Him and through Him. We are in the center of the will of God. Praise be to God's holy name. After Assyrians taken the captivity of Israel and the Judah survived more than 120 years plus and finally they came into the captivity of Babylon in 597 BC and actually they come into the captivity of Babylon under the power of Nebuchadnezzar II in the year 586 BC. This is where our text comes in. When they were in the captivity of Babylon, 200 years plus before, a prophet by name Isaiah is talking some names, he's talking some countries, he's talking some kings where they were used by the power of God to give a deliverance to the people of Israel. People of God. 
For you to get the deliverance, God can use anybody into your life. Amen. Hallelujah. For you to give the treasure, God can bring the Gentiles unto you. For you to give the treasure, God can bring every nation unto you. So that because God loves you, God uses somebody for you. Glory be to God. A treasure. And God knows you. And at that time, Isaiah was telling, hey, there is a king going to come and he will go and win the uh, Babylonian Empire and his name is Cyrus. He is from the Persian king, made of Persian. You've got to understand the history of the Bible. What are the kingdoms? Uh, uh, that's what I mean. This is a history book. This book is a history book. If you love this history book, oh, you can understand wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things of God. People of God, that's the time Isaiah was prophesying, hey, there's a king going to come. His name is Cyrus. You read that in uh, Isaiah. You read that in Jeremiah. You read that in uh, Nehemiah. You read that in Ezra. All these books talk about that. Anyway, I'll quickly sum up this history. So Isaiah tells, hey, God is going to bring a king by name Cyrus from the Persia and he's going to win the Babylonian and through the Gentile king, God will take you back from your exile to Jerusalem and he'll build you the temple. Amen. Hallelujah. The treasure is for the temple. Oh God, help us to understand. Whenever God gives something into your life, you should use it back to the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. When God gives you the riches, oh, you enjoy the riches, nothing wrong with it. But make sure your riches will serve God. Amen. Hallelujah. God gives you 10 cars, doesn't matter if you can have that. But make sure the cars will. I'm just giving an example. Every riches the Lord gives you, every call from God is a call to God. Amen. Can I repeat that? Every call from God is a call to God. When God calls you, God expects you to repeat that call to Him. Amen. That means when God called you, you have to serve God. Every call from God is a call to God. So now what it says is, Cyrus is going to set you free. Cyrus is going. So for Cyrus to build the temple of God, oh, hallelujah. For Cyrus to build the temple of God, to favor the Israel people to go back from the, uh, 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 from the exile into the land of Jerusalem and to build the temple, God wants to show favor to Darius, I mean uh, Cyrus. Of course Darius also. Next line. I know I don't want to go into the history. You get my point now? Why God is prophesying to Isaiah so that King Cyrus will build the temple of God. So let, let, let me tell you a Gentile king who does not know God, who does not know anything, he gives such an amount of money to build the temple of God. You know why? Because God used him for that purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you in the name of Jesus, when God gives you a vision or a mission and God calls you for a bigger thing, expect great things from the Lord because God will bring the Gentile nations or Gentile people or who are in it. We don't care. But God will bring the people unto you to show that, hey, this treasure for you. Take it and use it for my kingdom. Amen. This is what I'm waiting for. God should bring the treasure so that we can use it for the kingdom of God. We we'll use it for the glory of God. We we'll use it for something. We can profoundly say, Lord, the treasure is for you. Lord, the treasure you are giving me, I'm bringing it back to you so that I can build the temple of God. Amen. Lord, you give me treasure. I keep it in the bank. My millions will go in the bank. No! God has given. Oh, people of God, this is not a, a spiritual prophecy. This, oh my God, understand. This is a physical prophecy. What God has done, He's telling, I will go before you, Cyrus. I've chosen you. You read from uh, uh, verse 1, uh, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold to subdue nations before him and to strike kings of their armor, to open doors before me so that the gates will not shut. Oh God, 
this is a typical physical kingdom prophecy 200 years before the Cyrus could come into the lives of Israel. Isaiah prophesied and what Isaiah has prophesied has been confirmed by Jeremiah in chapter 25 to 29. You got to connect the Bible. I just want to give you the essence of the promise this morning so that you can grab this. I don't care how we go through the situation. I don't care how difficult it is. I don't care how troublesome it is. I don't care where we are going, how we are going, what I care. Do you see the treasure the Lord has given unto you? Amen. Hallelujah. And this cannot be seen with your natural life. Which I'm going to quickly show it to you. And let me put it this way. And God has called the Cyrus, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He's going. And literally, if you see, if you see the promise, is literally, I will give you the hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am when 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 Cyrus is, you know. If you go to the history, it's a, it's a long story cut short. Without an arrow, without sword, without any damage or killing to the people, Cyrus took Babylon. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the work of God. You know why God said, I will level the mountains and I will break down the gates of bronze. You know, you see the history of Israel at that time, the history, because David built it, uh, Solomon built a beautiful temple and beautiful, uh, you know, all around the walls, there are so many bronze gates, literally. And every bronze gate, God has broken it so that Cyrus can step into that promise. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know how much you're taking this. I'm taking right to the spirit. Hey, you can get into the bronze gate. It's not you. The power of God will shatter the gate. The power of God will cut ascend the gate. Because God's promise is that, hey, I have a treasure inside the walls. Amen. Hallelujah. And no wall can stop you. No gate can stop you. No bronze or iron or silver. Nothing can stop you. Because it's a God's treasure which is kept inside of you. You are going to go inside of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm on fire this morning. Enjoy a literal promise. It is literally happening. The doors of bronze are cut asunder. When Cyrus is going, the miracle power of God is working, but he does not know it. But he come to know when Daniel was saying, hey, Cyrus, we know you are going to come. How do you know I'm going to come? Because my prophet called Isaiah prophesied 200 years before you could do that and even told your name, a king from Persia, Cyrus will come and release your people. Then he understood. Oh, that's why. And I was reading the history. Oh my God. You know, Israel, the kings of Israel, they stored so much of treasure underground and God just opened it for Cyrus. You know why? Because Cyrus has to pump in all the money to build the temple of God. Oh, hallelujah. Are you willing to build the temple of God so that you can take the treasure of God? And treasure is not to accumulate in a bank account. The treasure is that you can take it and use it for the glory of God and build the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. A treasure. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I was shocked. I was shocked to see that. The science, I'm just going quickly. I'm just going quickly. He said, I will subdue the nations. You know how many nations, how many nations Cyrus has won? I'm talking history. Hey, this book is a book of history. I'm talking a history book. A history teacher can tell you everything. What has happened in this book? That's what it's called a living book. And God will read your history. God will write your history. And God can rewrite your history. Amen. Hallelujah. When you come into the blood of Jesus, when you come into the name of the Lord, when you come into the Holy of Holies, whatever your history, God will erase it. Because He said, when you are born again, you become a clean slave before God. And God will write a 
new history for you. Amen. And that history contains a hidden treasure. Glory be to God. A hidden treasure for you. I tell you, I promise you this morning, there's a hidden treasure for you. Have you seen that? Have you realized that? At least you know what it is. Let me go quickly. And Cyrus so stabbed you many nations. The Syrians, the Syrians, Arabians, Cappadocians, Persians, the Lydians, and a list of things. And everywhere he went, he dug the treasure. The history tells me. Who gave the treasure to him? A Gentile king who doesn't know even who Yahweh is. But God's anointing on him for a special cause. You know what is that? He has to build the temple of God. A Gentile king is building the temple for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He's saying, come on, go, go. All the exiles were released under Zerubbabel, under Ezra, under Nehemiah. They went and built. And whatever money you want, I have God has given me an appraisal. Take it. Amen. We get the treasure for the glory of God. I tell you in the name of Jesus. I've been waiting for the treasure in Jesus' name. We will get it and we will see the kingdom of God is expanded without any measure in Jesus' name. I believe it. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe it, take it in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. People of God. I go quickly three things how you can receive this treasure. Please don't mistake me. Money is not evil. Riches are not evil. Accumulating stuff is not evil. How you use it, that is the what you have to be careful. I have hundred thousand dollars, I have a million dollars, I have five million dollars, ten million dollars, I have over twenty million dollars for God. Amen. Hallelujah. How is it? Amen. A treasure will come. Gentiles will bring the treasure for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to say is when God gives the treasure, hey, you got to use it for the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what God has given the treasure to Cyrus. Hey, Cyrus, you have to build my temple. I know you know not my name. I know you don't know who I am, what I am, where I am from here. You don't know anything, but know that I am the Lord. Amen. Oh, if you do God. People of God, what you have to do with this? When God calls you for a treasure, I go quickly three things. Isaiah chapter 45. I'm going to talk only verse 2 and 3. Quickly. When God calls a person, you got to believe he anoints that person first thing. Amen. Hallelujah. God anointed Cyrus for a special cause, for a special purpose. Wherever God calls you, God calls you a unique call. Amen. Hallelujah. No two persons are like you. Amen. Isn't it? God calls you name. God anoints you. What does it mean? What does it mean anointing? People don't understand. People have no clue what is anointing. Anointing means three things. Separates, set apart, and sanctifies. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I say again? Anointing of God is of three things. Anointing will separate you from all the kings when God gave the anointing upon now, Cyrus, Cyrus was separated to do the work of God. Amen. Are you reaching me? Anointing to three things. It will separate you. Set apart and sanctifies. There are so many people in the world, God chosen one race called Israel and God sets apart. Anything, anything to take. There are so many kings God sets apart Samson. When he set apart a Samson, Samson has got a purpose to do. Amen. Set apart, separate first, then he sets apart to do what he has to do, and then he sanctifies to do the job. That is called an anointing. People no clue 
Because they don't hear the teachings. They hear something, what they understand, what they believe. No, that's not what it is. Bible is everything. Alright? And he can be separate. And, and when God calls you, you got to be a separated person. I always tell my daughter also, who I come in. Don't be one among hundred, be one out of hundred. Is it making sense? If you're one among hundred, nobody, nobody, nobody watches you or nobody cares for you. But if one am out of one out of hundred, you'll be separated. Amen. Hallelujah. Christianity is separation from the world. Amen. No, no, no. These teachings nowadays doesn't work, Pastor. No, no. This teaching doesn't work now. We're all with people. What is wrong? God said love people. Everything they have a quotation for them. Alright? God said love people. It's not loving people. We love people, but we separated. Jesus was separated. Jesus was sinners, but he is never a sinner. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus moved with sinners, but he never sinned. Jesus moved with the all kinds of uh, you know tax collectors and all, but he never did those things. That's what separation means. Separation doesn't mean that you go with them. Separation means you don't do what they do. A Christian is like that. It should be like that. If you want to have the treasure of God, you've got to be a separated person for the call of God. Amen. A separated life will sanctify you and a sanctified life will bring you the treasure unto you. Amen. Not everybody. Not everybody can have the treasure. Let me go. And if and wherever God calls a person, first he anoints, and secondly, he calls a person by name. Hey, Raj. Hey, X. Hey, Y. Hey, Z. I have a purpose for you. I lost my dad. My mom was bedridden. I was related to Australia. My wonderful job, my multinational company job, was in trouble turmoil and on top of that I got a letter from Australia saying that your application has been rejected. I just cried unto the Lord, Lord what's happening? You told us to go, you told us to apply, you told us everything, we got complete confirmation from you, then only we are moving, what's happening? Two years, it's a mess around me. Two years, we have gone through the life which we had never been gone through two years. And at the end of the two years, I lost my dad for nothing. And my mom was bedridden and everything is chaos. I was all alone in my native place, uh, in my work spot. And my wife and my uh, child was in my native place looking after my uh, mother because they don't know when, when my mother is going to pass away. And I was... I, I wanted to go to my native place, but there's a heavy cyclone and all the trains, everything cancelled and all alone. Around 11, 12 o'clock, I came back from the uh, railway station because there's no train and I was crying, Lord, what's happening? There came a voice. God calls you by name. He knows your name. He's not forgotten you. He knows what he's doing with you. You know, in the midst of darkness, oh, let me explain to you. He said, I give you the treasures of darkness. May God open the understanding. You know what is the treasure of darkness? Darkness. Every treasure is in the darkness. If you are going through a dark phase of your life, if you are going through the worst season of your life, if you are going through the worst situation of your life, I tell you, that's a darkness. In the darkness, there is a treasure. Three times I heard the voice. Pick up your laptop. Pick up your laptop. Pick up your laptop. Immediately I just opened my, by God's grace, because I'm in a good company, I used to have laptops, everything. And I just said, what? I opened my laptop in the afternoon around 12 o'clock or so. By the time I closed the laptop, it was night past 12 in the midnight. 12, 13 hours, the Lord was talking to me and I was writing everything. That's what I said. I know the treasure, what I have in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what we don't worry. It's not that we don't like people. It's not that we don't respect people. But people cannot do anything with us unless God does something. 
That doesn't mean that we neglect people. We love people. We need people. We want people. Please understand my heart. And that night, he said, now I open the doors. I just again called. But Australia, we applied it again for some mistake. Something went wrong. And they said, you're through. And I went back to my native place. My mom was here. Everything set. We came here. We know the treasure. I'm talking history. I'm not talking stories. I'm talking history. My history. Your history. God sees your history. God needs you. You're going through darkness today. A darkness may be your health. A darkness may be your relationship. A darkness may be a financial constraints. A darkness may be anything else. In the darkness is a treasure. Amen. Hallelujah. In my darkness, a two, two years of darkness, there is a treasure. God opened my eyes. Hey, my son, it is not that what I'm going through for this. I, I, I made you go through this for a reason. And you opened my eyes on that afternoon around 12 hours. My eyes were open for what I had to do for the rest of my life. And I wanted to live for that. I call him. He calls you by name. And the third thing is, he prepares you. God has prepared me for nearly 20 years to come to this place. Amen? We just didn't come like that. Not an emotional step. Not a step that we can just take it in no time. No, 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 no. no. God prepares you for a cause. God prepares you for a part. Then only you have the strength to step by and to stand in the midst of all the tempest, in the midst of all the challenges, in the midst of all the darkness. There is a blessing and there is a treasure that God prepares you. Making it sense? God prepares you. People of God. Three things. I want you to tell you in chapter 2 again, I mean, 40, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2, I will go before thee. That means his presence. Amen? His presence. Unless the presence of God comes with us, we cannot see the treasure. You can't leave God and say, Oh, I have, Lord, I need treasure. Now does we need only treasure? God, not God. Amen? I need only treasure, God, not you. I'll see you later. First, where is my treasure? No, 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 it doesn't work like that. Unless you have the presence of God, you cannot know where to go to see your treasure. If the, the presence of God will continue to guide you and lead you. Amen? God was so, God was so, so, so mad with the, and the second one is, And second one, God is saying is, Cyrus, I'll break the places of gates of bronze and cut ascend the bars of iron. That means you need the power of God. Amen? Hallelujah. First one, you need the presence of God. And second one, you need the power of God. And the third one, he says, I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden places of sea. I mean, the hidden riches of secret places. That means provision. Amen? Hallelujah. First thing, you need the presence of God. Second thing, you need the power of God. And the third thing, you need the provision of God. Within the three things, you can search your treasure. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we go quickly? The presence of God. There was a problem in the camp of Israel. And God was. There was a problem in the camp of Israel. And God was fed up with the people. And he said, hey, these people. No good for me. I'm not going to come with them. You know what Moses said? If your presence does not go with us, we don't want to go. Hallelujah. People of God, every time we fight against the time. If your presence is not with me, if your presence is not there with me, Lord, I don't want these riches. I don't want anything. I don't want the lamp going with milk and honey. I don't want the can unless you come with me. And God was pleased with it. Uh, Moses and in his presence the Bible tells me in some fullness of joy people of God let me go quickly I wanted to give this 
promise. You know what it says, Isaiah 45 2. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. What is this? Where is treasure? We're going to people, some people, they have a wonderful knowledge and they know where the treasures are and they'll go sacrifice everything to dig the treasures. Am I right? Treasure is not kept in a box and put it on the top of it. No. Treasure is always hidden in the dark places. You know what dark places? Your life, your situation, your circumstance. I don't know what you're going through in the dark. And let me tell you, God gives a complete importance and preference for dark places. Can I tell you something? Your very life starts in the dark place. Oh God, may God help us this morning. That's what he said. Hey, Silas, I give you the treasures of dark place. Oh Jesus. And your very life is begin in the dark place. And dark place is required for you to get the life. Amen. Hallelujah. Where you sow the seed, what is the seed? We put it nicely on the table and put it there. Oh, seed, grow, grow, grow. Does it? You bury it in the dark place. When the dark place is going through, there is a light in the dark place to shoot out. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are going through a dark situation, if you are going through something challenging life, you think that my life is gone, my life is where, my life is all done and nothing I can do. If you are going through the dark place, the Spirit of God is telling you, in the dark place, there is a treasure. Amen. Take that in the name of Jesus. People of God, understand this theory. Let this tell the Spirit of God tell you this. You know, that body, we bury it to stay there. Listen carefully. That body, we bury it to stay there. But we plant the seed to bury it to change the form. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to Did you receive it? God is burying you not to stay there. God is burying to change your season to come like a tree. Amen. Hallelujah. So you are not buried to stay there. You are planted to come as a grown up tree. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. May God give this understanding. So when God says, hey, I'm not burying you for a while. I just buried the seed so that you can come up with life. Amen. In that hidden, your treasure is in the dark places. And every light begins in the dark place. I can give you so many. In the beginning, oh God, in the beginning, everything dark, everything dark. The Bible says that the, it's full of void, full of void, and the Spirit of God is hovering upon. Can you feel that? Where the Spirit of God is hovering upon? The darkness. Oh, hallelujah. See, can you define me darkness? Oh my God, I finished my time. Can you define darkness? Darkness is uh, uh, 30 millimeters, 70 millimeters, uh, uh, 50 decimals. Can you define darkness? What is darkness? Darkness is an abstract word. Darkness is absence of light. I mean, hallelujah. You can't see darkness. You can't measure darkness. You can't quantify darkness. No, you can't. Darkness is absent of something. That is light. I mean, hallelujah. When the light comes in, darkness goes away. But darkness is required to bring light. I mean, hallelujah. Otherwise, you don't know the value of light if there's no darkness. I mean, hallelujah. So God uses it. That's why he said, Siren, I give you the treasures of darkness. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. People of God. Let me go quickly. His power. His power. I just go quickly. His power. His power. His power. That means Holy Spirit power. That if you read Isaiah, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me and set me to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from the darkness for the prisoners. The power of God should be in you to get every shackle that's working around you. Amen. Hallelujah. You need the power of God. 
In everyday life, you need the power of God. Because when you walk outside, there's so many problems, there's so much of captivity, there's so much of darkness around you. But the Spirit of God will set you free, 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 free. Amen? Glory be to God. I have so much to say, but I'm just going quickly. And the third one is, this is what we call the hidden treasure. His provision. Amen? His provision. Glory be to God. And this, let me read this. Let me read this. This provision, God's treasure, is hidden from your eyesight and revealed to your insight. God's treasure will be hidden from your eyesight and be revealed to your insight. Amen. Hallelujah. That is nothing but your vision. Am I reaching here? You can't see God's, you can't see with your knowledge, intellect, or anything. You can't see that. But it will be seen in the, that's what the Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. However, it is written, no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, no mind has ever conceived the things God has already prepared for those who love Him and those things God revealed to us by the Spirit. People of God, this treasure you have to see in faith. Not by mind, not by power. Only in faith. Hebrew chapter 11, 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That means it's a substance and an evidence. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak this blessing upon you. I don't know what is your darkness today. God will have the treasure in you. Amen. Hallelujah. I shared from my life. Two years, I had gone through an act of darkness. Everything is going wrong. Everything went wrong. Everything hell Everything confusion. Everything is Lord, what's happening? Am I doing the right thing? Hey, that is a darkness that brings you a treasure out of you. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know, people of God, I speak this promise upon the church and upon the people who are watching this morning. Hey, there is a darkness in your life. I tell you, the darkness is something God brings a treasure out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Let it be anything. Maybe your health, God will bring you health. Maybe finances, God will take away everything. Maybe relationship, God will establish. Maybe business, God will increase the business. Maybe anything what you're looking for, what you're going through the darkness, may God turn it into the treasure. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let me your eyes. Father God, I thank you for this promise that you've given us in Jesus' name. 